<laughs> if you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, people who spend a lot of time in the woods, what is the creepiest thing you have seen out there? Growing up in a rural town we didn't have too much to do. At the age of 14 most weekends I'd spend exploring the outsides of town with a friend of mine. The outsides of town were mostly all typical Australian bushland, with the exception of a few large untamed fields. One day a friend and I were following a river just down to the point of it being new territory for us. This was in noon by the way and the bush ahead seemed a lot more dense and darker than what we'd expect. We still kept walking but just before getting to the opening to it we both simultaneously stopped in our tracks. I had a feeling come over me of being extremely uneasy and anxiety ridden. We both looked at each other and knew we both felt the exact same thing. With little talk we turned around and headed back hurriedly. As stated, not necessarily scary. I did however find it really eerie how both of us, at the same time had the feeling something was off but couldn't pinpoint one thing. Almost as if we had stepped over a line of sorts. Backpacking in the Yukon. We met this dude named Carl in Dawson at a free dinner put on by the town church. He asked my friend and I, both girls, where we were staying, we said we were backcountry camping to play it safe, and then he went on to say he knew the whole area like the back of his hand. He asked for specifics, we lied and said we were at the main campsite. We finished our dinner and tried to run out of there, but then he cornered us and offered to give us a ride back to our campsite. Luckily we had a car, so we said no thanks and tried to make a run for it. We got to our car and started driving down the road to where we were camping. It's the Yukon, there's only a few people driving back and forth and we took a turn onto a gravel road heading north. We realize there's been a truck following us since we left town, and we especially notice once we're on this gravel road with absolutely no service and no emergency services. There are literally no turnoffs on this road, even if there was we were in prime bear territory next to a river so running for it wasn't even worth it. My friend decided she was just going to drive faster and try to pull a fast one on Carl. So we blitzed down the gravel road, until we hit snow. The whole road is covered in snow and ice and we can't go much further in the pace that she set. We see a campsite ahead of us, blitz it there, and park the car on the far side of the road to hopefully confuse the guy. We grab our tents, sleeping bags, food, and everything warm within our vicinity and make a run for it. We saw that the campsite had a shelter in the middle. We knew we had to get warm quickly, so the game plan was run to the shelter, get fully dressed, and prepare to sleep in a snow embankment. However once we got to the shelter we bumped into a family of 12 people, 8 men and 4 women. We ran into the shelter swearing, cursing, and freaking out because we felt that creepy Carl was after us, so once we turned around and saw the faces staring at us in amazement we calmed down and tried to explain our situation. From the moment we uttered the words there's a man who's been following us for the last 100 kilometers, everyone stepped up. The men ran outside with their knives, hiking poles, bear spray, etc. and the women took us and told us to run. They had seen a dense patch of trees in the northeast corner of the campsite, and knew that all of us could hide within the trees without fear of being found, they even mentioned we could build Quincy's super quickly to hide in, but running further away felt safer. As we ran to safety, we could hear the men yelling and telling creepy Carl to stay away. There were loud noises, a car alarm, we knew it was our car, and then complete silence. My friend and I stared at each other with tears in our eyes, we were in the northern part of the Yukon, in the snow, in minus 10 degrees Celsius weather, and we had just been followed from what we thought was just going to be a free dinner from the local church. After 30 minutes, the other women decided it was time to return to the shelter and to find the men. We returned and found the men safe and sound. Apparently creepy Carl had told them that we were none of their business, and that we had wronged him in some sort of manner so he broke our car window and then turned around and left. One of the guys had a car so he had followed creepy Carl down the road a good 15 to 20 kilometers before turning back around. The women invited my friend and I to sleep on their campsite and we gladly obliged. We woke up the next morning safe and sound in the middle of the Yukon without cell or emergency services and a giant appreciation for finding other humans. In the Cairngorms two weeks ago. The wind was reported over 100 km per hour. We were in our tent for 1730, at about 1900 hours I heard a calm female voice say hello. Hello are you okay? I nudged the guys, asked them if they heard it. They say it's the wind. They we all hear an engine in the distance, we all heard it. We were at Lock Etchokan which is very remote, no roads, only accessible by foot, the snow was very deep that day and it was close to a whiteout. We look around but find nothing, no tracks, 
etc. But whatever it was, we heard it through the howling wind so it had to be close. We weren't too creeped out but we are still confused. Every year I go out to the Rockies to go climbing and hiking. To minimize the weight of my backpack I use a hammock instead of a traditional tent. Plus sometimes it's easier to find two trees than flat ground. I definitely feel more exposed but that was never an issue, until now. I'm taking a nap in the afternoon and in my sleep haze I hear something rustling around, I figure it's one of my friends getting ready so I roll over to see what the plan is. But instead of one of my buddies I have a brown bear not more than two feet away staring straight at me. I can't even remember how I felt in that instant I just reacted and hollered and clapped my hands and it quickly left. Needless to say I was wide awake after that. Just to have something that potentially dangerous creep up on you when you are asleep is freaking terrifying. And I had two more weeks of the trip to go sleeping in that hammock. Went on a multinational slash state park trip with my girlfriend. We were in a tent at the top of a canyon, about to fall asleep when we heard large footsteps outside of our tent. It was a very dark night, and there were no headlights or flashlights that preceded the footsteps arrival, so we were certain it was an animal. After making a couple of circles around our tent, whatever it was started tearing at the ground near our tent. It must have been about a meter away, if not closer. My girlfriend asked me what it was. A deer. I replied. She told me to look out the top of the tent with the light to check. Nope. Because it's a deer, and if it's not a deer, I don't want to know what it is. I'm pretty sure it was a deer. I've spent more than my share of time alone in the woods, but one occasion definitely stands out as the creepiest thing I've experienced while no one else was around. I have a friend that has 40 acres outside of town that he has slowly converted into a subsistence farm for his family. Years ago when he mostly only had a dozen or so chickens out there I spent a few months living on the property in a tent while I was between seasonal work. At the time the property was decades neglected overgrown pasture land with a few clumps of denser woods. I had set up my tent and homestead right in the middle of the property in a small clear area between two densely wooded thickets. My friend would come by once a day to feed the animals, but other than that, there was zero chance of me seeing another human unless I left the property. I really enjoyed the solitude, and had taken to observing nature in a way that I had never really done before. When the incident occurred I had been living out there for about two months, so I was well used to the sounds of nature outside my tent at night. I had gotten to the point where I wouldn't even bother to get out of the tent and look if I heard a small animal walking past my tent at night. I had even gotten used to the sound that the roof of the pump house made when wind blew hard from the southeast. My friend had been short on nails when he was building the roof over the pump, so the southeast corner wasn't nailed down, and a strong wind would cause the corner of the corrugated metal roof to peel up, and then crash down loudly when the wind stopped. It was about 200 feet away from my tent, so it had caused me to jump a bit when I first moved out there, but within a month it had just become another sound outside my tent at night. It was even sort of comforting, like some people that live in big cities say that they can't sleep without the sound of traffic outside their window. It probably helped that the sound was always paired with the sound of wind blowing through the trees. So one night I'm tucked in my sleeping bag, starting to drift off, when I hear the shed corner come crashing down. Nothing to worry about, I probably didn't even open my eyes. But then I hear what sounds like a person mimicking the sound the shed had made. Right outside my tent, my blood freezes in my veins, and my eyes open wide in the darkness, and I hold perfectly still. I know that my friend has already come and gone hours before. I am alone on a piece of land that is large enough that there is no reason for a person to accidentally end up next to my tent in the middle of the night. After a few moments the wind makes the shed roof crash again. And again I heard a person mimic the crashing sound a few seconds later. I called out and asked if there was anyone there. No response. The shed roof crashed a third time, but this time there was no mimicking sound. So I am out of my sleeping bag, and out of my tent, flashlight in one hand, camp knife in the other. I shine my flashlight right where the fake crashing sound seemed to come from. Nothing. It's the edge of the woods, but the sound had been close, and I can see through the brush well enough to tell that there isn't a person hiding behind the bushes and low branches. I'm looking at the ground, and none of the dead leaves look particularly disturbed. I'm trying to figure out how far someone could have moved at a slow enough pace to not make enough sound for me to hear their footsteps on the leaf litter, answer, not very far, when the shed roof crashes again. And I hear the same fake crash sound again. Right next to me. Where I am 100% positive there isn't a person standing. At this point my heart is beating a mile a minute, and I am getting ready to believe in the supernatural. While sweeping my flashlight beam through the human free spot the sounds seem to be coming from, I see a bird. It's sitting in the low branches of a tree, at about head height. 
I stop moving the flashlight and keep the beam on the bird for a moment. The bird opens its mouth and makes the fake crashing sound. Oh, and the little guy stuck around for another month making the same sound, so I eventually got used to his sound at night as well. But I resented it every time I heard it. The weirdest thing I've had happen was a full-blown cryptid encounter out in the Joshua Tree, California area. I'll preface this post by explaining a bit about myself. I've always been a night owl and my current profession actually entails being up all night so the dark doesn't bug me, and I have pretty excellent night vision. I don't panic. I'm a medical professional and a bit of an outdoorsman. I'm a big dude, 6 foot 2 260, and a biology nerd. I've posted about the first encounter in a few Ask Reddit threads, but never about the second. The first encounter I had was on October 22, 2005 on a stretch of back road in the Mojave Desert in the vicinity of Joshua Tree in Yucca Valley, California. It was the third or so day of quail season, and I was all tagged up and ready to go hunting. I had a little Jack Russell Terrier named Gus that a friend let me borrow for the day since I can't own dogs or cats, allergic as all hell. I drove out and parked my Jeep on a turnout at a dirt road intersection. There are a zillion dirt roads out there, and some of the bigger ones actually have stop signs at the intersections. It was a good day, and getting a little late but I hadn't hit my bag limit yet. I decided that I would stay out a bit past sundown to try and bag the last few birds on my permit. I was dressed pretty warmly, and Gus didn't seem to mind so away we went. By the time I hit my bag limit the sun had been over the horizon for about an hour. Getting back to the road was easy enough, and following it back to the jeep was as well. Around the time full twilight set and I came to an intersection with stop signs in both directions, and was getting my bearings when Gus froze mid-trot and immediately starting growling with his hackles up. He was a pretty chill dog so watching him go from happy little derp to defcon 1 so fast was alarming on its own. I scanned the area to see what he might be upset about, because my first guess was javelina, wild pigs, and all I had was a shotgun loaded with bird rounds. As I said, these were dirt roads. Each road is roughly the same width as an average two-lane city street. On the corner opposite the one we were on, I spotted a creature moving with the same general gait as a rooster, but without bobbing its head. What clued me in initially that it wasn't a chicken was the simple fact that from head to foot it must have been close to 3 feet tall. Based on body mass, I'd estimate that it weighed about 40 to 50 pounds I tied Gus leash to my belt so he wouldn't bolt after it and waited for it to wander off. It loitered on the corner for a minute, then without making so much as a flutter, it made a roughly 9 foot standing leap from the ground to perch atop the stop sign. Definitely not a chicken. At this point I decided it was prudent to be armed, so I popped two fresh shells in my shotgun and held it at the ready. When I looked back up, I saw its eyes. The two things that immediately sprang to mind, this is where the biology geek comes in, were that one, they were forward facing, meaning this animal was likely predatory, and two, they were proportionally enormous, meaning it was likely fully nocturnal. I realized that a 3 foot tall, predatory, nocturnal, 40 pounds animal that can make a 9 foot standing leap was now regarding me from a high perch, albeit from roughly 40 feet away, and that I was in a bad position. I leveled my shotgun and unloaded both barrels in it. After the echoes died down, it was still perched at the top of the stop sign, but making odd chirrup noises that sounded a lot like sneezing. I was reloading when it jumped down from the stop sign and ran away from us through the brush on the adjacent corner. I finished reloading, waited until Gus calmed down and jogged back to the jeep. On the way back through I hit my trail lights at the intersection this had happened at and saw that the stop sign had definitely been peppered well with shot, and that the majority of it had been centered on the animal. This animal had taken a 9 foot standing leap soundlessly, perched perfectly on a 2 inches square area and taken two 12 gauge loads of bird shot center mass, and sneezed at me. On the way out of town I told the story to the Spanish speaking clerk at a local gas station who laughed and told his coworker you hear that. This garro just ran into El Chupacabra. Not so much creepy but more supernatural. Back in around 9 years ago, I was in a scout group that was organized by a Christian group and had Christian leaders. I, personally was not religious at that time but I did believe in the existence of spirits and a higher being. So a day before our winter camp, we found out that the leader who was supposed to plan our trip chose the wrong campsite. Instead of one that is directly next to the parking lot, he chose one that had around a 30 minute hike, not bad. However, after we unloaded everything at around 3 pm and started hiking, we noticed that this campsite is a lot harder to find than we anticipated. Soon enough, the sun set and it became extremely cold, wet and dark. In fact, some of us had icicles drooping from their cold wet hair. We were about to give up and call park rangers for help as at this point as we had no clue where we were and it was around 2 am. 
So one of our leaders suggested that us scouts and a leader take a rest while the other two leaders scavenged the nearby areas to see if they could find the campsite. They had whistles in case they got lost. As the leader who was with us is a devoted Christian, she suggested that we hold hands in a circle and pray together to ask for guidance. After our prayer, we opened our eyes and saw a light that somewhat resembled an oval with two wings on its side. However, the light faded away almost immediately after we saw it. The leader that was with us was adamant that those were angels and so as soon as the two others leaders came back, we followed the direction of the light. To our surprise, we found the campsite within 10 minutes of hiking. When we got to the campsite, we asked the two leaders who walked away if they ever went in that direction and they said they had not. To this day, that has been the most supernatural event that I have ever experienced. This was around 2007 to 2008. I was about 12 at the time and me and my dad were heading up to Cape York. It was a good few days drive to Cairns from where we lived in Bondeburg, Queensland and we were in no rush. When we finally got into Cairns at around 10.30 pm we were both really excited to cross the Daintree River and really start the adventure. It was decided that we would hang out at my uncle's place for a few days as we didn't see him too often. My uncle is a dentist straight out of the 70s linen glasses wearing pot smoking hippie musician guy. He also loved fishing and his favorite place to go was the Daintree. So we make some plans to go fishing with him the next day and then turn into bed because we've been driving for hours by this stage. Anyway the morning rolls around and we head out launch the boat around 6am and fish away most of the day. Didn't catch anything amazing but we kept well entertained by my uncle telling us all of his stories. As the sun is beginning to set we head over to this little spit of white sand way over on the side of the river. My uncle was deadest that he could find his way back in the dark so we hung about on the little private beach talking, drinking and cooking a lamb roast in the campfire oven. Now for those who don't know the Daintree has a bit of a lizard problem and when I say lizards what I mean is big crocodiles that will fuck you up six ways from Sunday. My uncle is adamant that they don't come this far out as the water starts getting a bit cold for them so we aren't too worried. So as we are sitting there we notice that old uncle is doing much talking he's just kind of sitting and listening. We ask him what's up and he just sort of motions us to shut up. We don't really hear fuck all but he's got the both of us pretty spooked. All of a sudden he jumps up and runs as fast as you'd please to the tinny and grabs this big long bamboo spear thing. One of us had asked him earlier in the day what his was for and he said he kept it around for if crocs got too close he could give them a jab from the boat and they'd swim off and leave him be. Well, he takes a couple of steps off into the dark and jabs into this patch of mangroves with this long ass bamboo pokey stick. Me and my dad just about fucking died as we hear this big scaly cunt take off into the water at about 50 kmh. We noped out of there without finishing our roast. Chills my blood to know that thing was a scant few feet away from us while we were having a good time. If any of us would have walked off in that direction for a slash we'd have been chomped for sure. Deep in a rural forested area of northern Wisconsin, I used to hike with my dog. Pack a sandwich and some water and take the rifle, and just go walking. Didn't use the rifle much, but it was part of the fun. Anyway, me and Hooch, the dog, spent one day delving much farther into the forest than we usually did. Things had gotten quite somber, lots of moss and a bit of a swampy area. But then we came through to a nice clearing that was basically in the center of this swampy moat. In the center of the clearing was a shanty town. It was a complex of cobbled structures made from basically shipping pallets and carpet samples. There were a handful of houses and what I dubbed the community center was a larger multi-room structure with a kitchen and living room. It was a very eerie area, and anyone who spent time in the woods knows that creepy feeling of being watched when the forest goes drop dead silent. We poked around for a few quick moments, saw that they had rigged a car battery to power some lights. They had coffee grounds. A shitter area out back. Some old magazines and a little makeshift library. Hooch started whining a bit, and I was already skeeved out, so I didn't need any more encouragement to GTFO. Decided to come back two weeks later with a camera. Whole thing was gone. Moved. No rubble or debris even. Shitter area covered up nice and tidy. That was 20 years ago. Any trace of the shanty town was gone within a year. Never figured out who it was or where they went, but it was remote enough in that area where it could have been anyone who didn't want to be part of civilization. I believe they saw me snooping around, but were deterred by the dog and gun, then relocated after being found out. I was out exploring in the woods in upstate NY. I was crossing a junior gorge and there was this really pretty 20-foot waterfall, so I climbed up around it. At the top the water ran flat for a dozen yards or so, and then it bent and was a gorge again. The first thing I saw was the altar in the middle of the stream. It was about 3 by 5 feet, and about 4 feet high, made out of flat stones. 
In amongst the stones were scattered bottles of liquor, not all empty. Also some knives of course. On one side of the stream was a cliff, on the other was a small bank and then a cliff. I must have spent five minutes scanning my surroundings as quietly as possible before investigating more. On the bank there were seats and stout walls made out of flat stones. Scattered around were things like shirts, cloth, a machete, and the occasional saw. And rope. When I was on the bank, I realized that where the stream bent, it was about five feet below the level of the bank, so someone could easily be there. Or just around the bend in the gorge, I had no way of knowing. So I scurried back down the waterfall and ran home, right? No, because I'm the type of person who would die in a horror movie. I'd been making no noise so I crept up to the bend in the stream where the bank dropped off. It was a ring-wraith hobbit situation, except I was the one crapping my pants. I was now able to peek up the gorge, so I did for a while to make sure no one was there. I slowly leaned over the edge of the bank, and then suddenly jumped down to the edge of the stream because I couldn't handle the suspense I had created for myself. No one was there, but it was a great place to hide. So I slowly made my way up the gorge, stopping every now and then to scan the ridges and look behind me. I've been back around that area about a dozen times, but I've only found that place a few times. I haven't gone back into the gorge I found it in though. I have two that happened in the same area of woods. First, decided to take me dog out into a large track of woods that I had a good amount of experience in to camp with me for the night. We made our way out to where I knew there were some sturdy frames, probably used for paintball some time ago, built into a couple trees, and continued to make a lean-to, build a fire, and eat dinner before a good old night in the dirt. As I was getting comfortable and preparing to sleep, I started hearing what sounded like the air rushing out of a bicycle pump, only much louder and continuously getting closer. My dog immediately stood alert, and it got so close that I eventually grabbed a stick that I had lit on four like a torch in one hand, and stepped out of the shelter with her on her leash in my other. I began walking deliberately in the direction of whatever animal was making this noise, which I later assumed to be a fisher cat as our town used to be known for an extremely high population of, while yelling and waving my torch all while my dog growled. This seemed to not only fail to scare it away, but enticed it to advance on us quicker. I quickly put out the fire and noped the fuck out of there cause I didn't want to risk my dog fighting anything that had the balls to come at us like that, thing followed us three quarters of a mile on our way home, making that weird hissing noise and growling the whole time. Second, in the same woods, only much deeper in and by myself with no dog. Made myself a much larger shelter, fire, and nice bed of pine branches before I ate dinner and laid down to sleep. I had been certain that I could see eyes glowing in the distance, but got no warning noises so figured it wasn't a fisher cat this time and, like I said, I had a very large and secure shelter so I just built my fire in front of the only entrance and laid down to sleep. I passed out for probably an hour or two until I woke up very quickly to the sound of something heavy with hooves pounding down a trail that ran right past where I was. I'm pretty sure it was too large deer, but what scared me was whatever the fuck they were running so hastily from. A minute after the shock of waking up to the hooves wears off, a whole fucking pack of coyote come barreling down the trail in the same direction going after the deer. Sounded like one or two stopped to investigate, but a huge yelling primate with a giant fire isn't something they usually want to be around for too long. A few years ago me and my dad were camping by Lilo at British Columbia, Canada. We were a few hours off the main roads and up in the mountains and we found a great place to set up for the night. I set up the tent and my dad slept in the back of his Land Rover Defender with the dog. He went to bed pretty early and I stayed up that night just wanting to take in the endless night. I was two months from joining the army so I was wanting to stay up late, that night it got very cold for August, around 2C, and I finally packed it in around 1am, kicked the fire out and rolled into my tent. Just as I was about to fall asleep on the cusp of dozing off I heard from down the nearby river valley what sounded like a scream. My eyes shot open, and my entire body was still. Listening intently for what it was. It sounded like it was about 100 meters away. After what seemed like ages, I finally moved a big to get comfortable and looked at my watch, 1.20 am. I contemplated that it was just my imagination but then I heard it again, louder and more clear. This time it sounded more demonic, but with blood-curdling screams. I was really frightened at this point and really wished my dog was in the tent with me. My mind was racing, we are a good two hours from the nearest town, no nearby farms or homes in this area. Should I go see what's going on? Is it someone being killed? Am I going to get killed if I say what's going on? The screams kept going though, over the course of an hour they got weaker, and quieter. Until the final plea for help, a long drawn out gasp for life. You could hear the blood mixed into the lungs when it tried to gasp. I lay there, in my sleeping bag. 
terrified. And then I heard it. A wolf howl. And then another further away. What I had just heard was a few wolves killing a large hoofed animal. Probably an elk or large deer. I felt relief that it was only wolves and not demons in the valley. It turns out that the kill was even further than I thought, combined with the stillness and bitter cold of the night the sound must have bounced up the valley, because the morning of, I walked down and found the remains what seemed like 500 to 600 meters away from the camp. Grew up on a ranch, seen my fair share of creepy things growing up in the mountains of Montana. I have a few stories that stand out. One I have trouble explaining, I was riding through deep timber trying to find a bull that had gone missing when my horse starts freaking out and refused to go any further. I noticed a clearing where some sunlight broke through the trees a little ways away, so I tied my horse to a tree and decided to take a look. Well, when I got into the clearing I found our bull only he was about 20 feet off the ground jammed into a huge pile of timber. Now this is bear country and bears will cache kills to come back to later, but whatever did this was unnaturally huge as this was old growth trees about 24 inches in diameter. The clearing was made from these trees being snapped off at ground level. I was just kind of in shock when my dog started growling and I noke out of there as fast as I could. Went hog hunting one night on a whim. I didn't think I'd actually get anything but I did end up shooting a nice hog. It ran off about 200 yards downhill into a small creek bed. I set my rifle in my truck and grabbed my pistol and butchering kit. Found the hog and started butchering it in the field to carry it back to my truck when I heard some coyotes howl. They sounded pretty far off so I thought nothing of it. About 15 minutes later they howl again and are closer. I start making my trek back to the truck and about 10 minutes after the last howls I start hearing rustling in the bushes. I can't see any eyes lighting up but it sounds bigger than a rabbit. I give a warning yell and then fire two shots into the ground and hear multiple somethings take off. My heart is racing and it seems everything is starting to play tricks on me. I keep walking back and as I'm approaching my truck I hear a very loud howl from maybe 100 yards behind me. I grab my rifle that has my green hunting light and shine it into the tree line and see three sets of eyes glowing. I threw everything into the bed and took off. That's the last time I went hunting alone and I always bring my rifle with me now. Was once fishing with a friend, a lake in the middle of nowhere and not a soul around. We had parked a few mile away and had to walk through dense woods with our gear to get there. About a 30 minutes walk with the gear. To paint a picture once you get to the lake the trees open up so you can see the lake around you but no further through the trees. And you lose cell phone service during the car ride about a half an hour away. A very secluded feeling. We had been there all day, a good 6 hours of daylight, and nobody else came, it started to get dark around 7.30 pm so we made a little fire in a pit. Around 10 pm we put the fire out it was pitch black outside, my friend had just recast his rods after I'd done mine so we could settle in for the night, we stay up till around 1 am just cracking jokes and eating food, only the sounds of nature, birds, owls and whatnot, and the wind, surrounding us. After we turned the tent light off about 1 am we heard zipping noises coming from outside, as if someone was opening a ziplock, just two, my friend nudged me and grabbed a small bat, looked outside, said nothing was there. 10 minutes go by and we are confused over this noise, then we heard a splash, we both jumped up and ran outside but there was nothing visible in the water, was dark, and no lights or people around from what we could see, we both get into the tent. By this time I'm shitting myself clutching onto a bat, we have no option but to stay, the car is too far away and the woods are too dense to walk through during the night, especially if something is out there. Whilst we're inside a really deep male voice side next to the tent you know you're not supposed to be here my friend said who's that no response. We get up to look, nobody there. No noises of someone walking away, no nothing. We turned the torches on and looked around stuck in a single spot outside the door of the tent. Stood there for about 5 minutes just looking making sure no one was there. There wasn't. We went back to bed but didn't sleep. We spoke very very quietly for the next 6 hours. 6 AM came the sun was out again, we got up to get the fuck out of there, when we went outside there was blood on the trees and a single footprint in the fire pit we had made the night prior that belonged to none of us. Last year I went on a 9 and a half mile hike, one of my shorter ones. About halfway through the hike, just sitting in the middle of a side trail, there was a little pink wheelchair with a little girl's backpack still hung on the side of it. To be honest it was a cute wheelchair, but the fact that his was cute and abandoned so far back in the woods in an area with no cell service was just so unsettling to me. I took pictures on my old phone, and continued on the hike. In my mind, I thought that if something was up, the sheriffs would be a ways out, and I could be the only help. 
I'm a big guy standing at 6 5 inches and at the time weighing in at around 275 pounds so figured I would be able to hold my own. I continued on with the hike, and when I reached the farthest part of the trail, it met a large wide circle back to the parking area, there was, you guessed it, nothing. But I had this immeasurable sense that someone slash something was following me. I summed it up to my nerves, but I swear I heard footsteps trailing behind me. To test it I would walk a bit and stop and see if it was potentially just an echo. But without fail, the footsteps would continue a bit then stop. I was freaked out but I still played it off as my nerves. I finished the hike without another incident, and watched the news slash listen to the radio to see if anyone had heard anything, but nothing really came out of it. There probably is a very reasonable explanation for it, however it sure did creep me out. My neighborhood is located in a semi-wooded area. Not really wilderness, but there's still some wildlife. This is my brother's story, not mine. He was skateboarding home from a friend's house late on a foggy evening. When he headed uphill, towards our house, he noticed a shadow obscured by fog at the top of the hill. Upon moving closer, he saw a deer illuminated in the streetlight. This deer was a full antlered, broad-chested, massive buck. The buck lowered his head, and my brother thought that it was going to charge him. Luckily, it headed off into the woods. Two dozen of fawn followed him. Another time, for a week, my dog would run to the window facing the yard and growl threateningly, with the bristling hair and all, shortly after dark. She has never done that since. I investigated the area during the afternoon, but I never found any sort of paw slash footprints, aside from my own. Oh, and then there was a time where I got charged by an armadillo. It was scary because I have never seen an armadillo run towards me before, and I wasn't sure as to what it was planning to do. Turns out, it merely wanted to sniff my shoes before scuttling off into the dark. I feel like something went very wrong with his genetics for him to charge a larger animal such as myself. When I was a teenager, growing up in Maine, I spent a lot of time in the woods. Good thing I loved it because there's plenty of it in Maine. We rarely went into the woods alone, kids being kids, you know, everything was more fun with friends. But, occasionally we did. I say we because something similar to what I'm telling now happened to my closest friend at the time, so one late June afternoon when I was 15 or so, my friends were busy with whatever and I was bored, so I decided to take a walk up into the woods on the north side of the city. It was an overcast day, I remember, and sort of dreary. I walked through an area we called Brombones. I have no idea how we ended up calling this patch of woods that, but that's what we called it, and out to a clearing that sat just up on a ridge above where a creek eventually flowed into Merry Meeting Bay. As I sat there I started to feel a little weird, like I was being watched, but I thought maybe my friends had gotten done with whatever they had been doing and came out looking for me, so I got up and started to walk back the way I came to see if they were nearby. As I walked back the way I'd come, and it was about a mile back out of the woods to the street, I was starting to feel weirder. Yes, leaving that clearing and back into the tree line made it darker, so that was part of it, I'm sure. As I'm walking back out, getting more and more amped up that I'm not alone. I looked back behind me fairly frequently, because I just felt like there was something that had been inside the trees when I walked back in and was now following me out. As I looked back I saw a small woman, and I don't know how I know it was a woman, really, I just do, in, well, black Viet Cong pajamas and a Vietnamese farmer's hat. I'm not sure what they're called. She was behind me, maybe 50 feet or so, running in a north-south direction. I was going from west to east. She was carrying a rifle of some sort. I want to say it was an AK-47, but truthfully, I don't know. All I saw was that she was armed, running, and running away from me, which was good. But this was the mid-80s so Vietnam wasn't nearly so far removed as it is now, so I was scared to death, and I got out of the woods and back to town as fast as I could. The funny slash weird part of this is that my friend was there that afternoon looking for me, we just never crossed paths. He showed up at my parents' house later that day and told me he'd been up there looking for me and without my saying so, he said it was really weird too. I looked up once when I was getting near Brom Bones and I saw this dude that was dressed like Robin Hood stand up, put an arrow in a bow and draw it back. I shut my eyes and shook my head and looked again and he was gone. I should have told him about the Viet Cong woman I saw, I know, it was like I was supposed to with that sort of segue. But I didn't dare to. It was just too weird. I live in rural Australia. We used to live across the road from a massive national park that has a ton of trails in it. Most of the trails, however, are not very well maintained, so it's not exactly the most popular place. And there's no waterfalls or anything pretty just your average scraggly Aussie bushland, sandy tracks, stock standard wildlife. 
The most popular track was one of the shorter ones, it led from the road, around the base of a foothill and then up to this massive sandstone ridge line with big cliffs, that made an excellent lookout and an okay rock climbing and abseiling destination. So, suffice to say, there were nicer and more popular national parks around us, but it was super convenient to have our ride across the road, as I'm an avid horse rider who competes in endurance, think 100 miles on horseback, so the trails were the best place for me and my horse to train. I would ride out nearly every day and I would hardly see anyone else out there, and when I did, it was always a local, someone else from the neighboring farms either on horseback or on a dirt bike. So this one morning in the late summer of 2011, up at 5am to train my horse before going into town for the day, I was surprised to see tire tracks leading both in and out of the sandy area that was the most commonly used entrance on our side of the park. You have to understand, we lived basically at the end of our road, some 150 miles or more from the nearest town, and no one comes down to our part of the road unless they mean to. Unless they live here, work here, have friends out here. So it immediately struck me that no one local would have driven into and out of that particular entrance, because we know the sand can be tricky and you can get stuck, which is why we take horses and dirt bikes. Anyway I put it out of my mind and continued on. I took my horse to the base of the trail leading up to the sandstone ridge, after a certain point it's too dangerous for horses, then I took the long way home, kind of creating a big love heart shape with the trails I took, with the point being at the main entrance, which is also where I exited. On a whim I decided to turn down a different track, one I had hiked alone days before, to see if I could find my way back to another ridge. So at this point I'm making one side of the love heart way longer than the other, meaning I will basically have to turn back on myself to get home. Which, is the easiest way, really, to not get lost in a big place like that. We trotted for maybe 20 minutes, didn't cover more than just a couple miles, when I found a little gully that looked familiar, so I turned into it, and started encouraging my horse to walk slowly down the hill. About halfway down, my horse spooked. As in, he took fright at something and jumped, much the same way people do when you frighten them. Only it's much more dramatic when the one doing the jumping weighs 1,300 pounds. So I look around to see what has frightened him. Honestly, it doesn't take much to frighten a horse. Their brains are about the size of a plum, so there's not a whole lot of room to process things rationally. My horse was routinely spooked by birds, kangaroos, leaves blowing in the wind and any number of other things he saw on a daily basis. Being that it was early in the morning I thought it was going to be ruse, but when I looked around for the source of his fear, I felt like my heart had dropped out my arse. About 50 meters, 150 feet, away from me, in a gum tree, there was a noose tied with new, thick, blue-gray rope. Just hanging there, shifting slightly in the breeze. I didn't stop to think about it. Straight away I had a terrible sense of dread overcoming me, and my horse obviously sensed it because all I did was turn him around and he did the rest, a full speed, flat-out gallop back to the main entrance point. I didn't stop him, didn't look back at that noose, didn't look behind us as he ran, I just knew I had to get out of there and I let him take me home, almost without thinking about it. I never went back into that part of the forest. If you go in the main entrance, turning left will take you down that way. And I never turned left again. I always took someone else with me on the few occasions I went back in, and we always went to the right. It was a couple summers ago. Me and my mate found this new hiking trail a town over so we decided to check it. We packed a bag with some snacks and a few beers and set out. The trail is running parallel with a ridge line that's about 200 erds above us. Pretty densely forested. We decided to scale the hill to the top off ridge, off trail, to see if we could get a good view. We reach the top and find a nice ledge. Crack open the beers and put them away. Then I look over to our left and I notice something blue in the distance. Curious teenagers we go to side to check it out. As we get closer we noticed it was an abandoned camp. The blue was a large tarp made into a makeshift tent big enough for two. There was food trash around and some other things. But what caught my attention was there were children's toys all around. Dolls, stuffed animals, even a little girl's bike. We assumed it was a homeless camp but why the girl's toys? Well, we then noticed a strange rock pile. It's about 4 feet long and 2 feet wide. And maybe 2 feet tall. Stacked stones in a pyramid shape. It was neatly placed and deliberately stacked in that fashion. Someone took their time making this. I though maybe they'd hidden something underneath. So I dismantled the pyramid to ground level. But then the stones continue beneath the surface in the same stacked fashion. As I'm pulling rocks out it committed down about another foot. We were speculating what it could be in a buzz state. Maybe cash or something. Then I looked up and say the girl's bike again with the toys. I asked my mate what if it's the little girl's body he went pale. I said I don't want to find out. We recovered the supposed grave and hiked back down. 
I still wonder if I kept digging if I would have found a missing little girl. Quite a number of years ago on my first trip to Africa, many more would follow, I was staying in a group camp within the Serengeti. The camp had quite a number of tents and was approved by the park management, and was allotted one, one, ranger with an AK-47 that looked like it was from the 70s. He patrolled around at night but the camp had no barrier and he couldn't be everywhere. I was on my way back to my tent after playing cards into the night with those old crappy headlamps, which I had pointed to the ground. The camp was mostly empty and my tent was at the farther end of where people were staying. I was watching my step and I look up, and the wash from the headlamp gives off enough light for me to see two pairs of eyes one amber and one blue stare back at me from about 20 feet away, out of the darkness. I can't see what it is, just their eyes, staring at me. Not small eyes either, probably about two or so feet off the ground. There's a point where you're so absolutely terrified your entire being goes into overdrive. Fight or flight doesn't even happen. You can't feel anything. Your body continues to work of its own accord, but all your mental capacity is focused on what's in front of you. No adrenaline. Almost like an out-of-body experience, really. I'm completely unaware of it but I continue to walk, and since I don't show any change of behavior the eyes turn off for me and walk away. I go into my tent as calm as can be, just in complete shock. Climb into bed and wake up the next morning, bring the ranger over and find the tracks, those eyes belong to two spotted hyenas. Pack hunters, on par with lions. I've had other encounters in Africa over the years, but that's been the only time I've ever been alone in the presence of a superior number of predators without any kind of weapon to defend myself, especially at night. This happened a few years ago at a local state park. I was going through a really bad breakup and wanted to go do something spiritual and relaxing to try and get my head straight. I had just bought a new camera a few years back, so I decided to go do some long exposure photography for stars. I chose a local state park to try this in because it was the darkest place I knew. There's a closed 10pm to 4am curfew, but people camp here so I figured it was loosely enforced. I also knew the trails very well so getting where I wanted to take pictures, a dry creek bed, would be easy and safe. I get there at about 2am and walk through the park with a red headlamp to not spook any animals. I set my tripod up and start taking pictures and everything is going great for like 30 to 45 minutes or so. It's nice, quiet, I had warm tea in a bottle, everything was going great. Suddenly I hear whispers and I immediately turn off my camera and move near the grass so I'm not so easily identifiable. I assumed it was campers sneaking around or a park ranger checking to make sure nobody was up to anything shysty. I see some dull twinkling light as well like there's a small patch of fireflies. I start hearing more whispers and seeing more twinkling lights. Now I'm kind of nervous because if it's a group of people and they see me and want to make trouble I'm kind of boned. But nothing happens. However I start seeing more twinkling lights and hearing more whispers to the point where it looks like the entire half of the creek edge is coated in fireflies and people whispering to each other. Then, all at once, the lights disappear and the whispering stops. I was mostly nervous for being caught and trying to figure out what was going on. The situation being weird didn't really dawn on me until later. I still wonder what exactly happened out there. I've debated going back to see if it happens again but I can never seem to find the time to. My grandfather used to have a place in Maine, about 6-7 to seven hours away from Boston, near Mount Katahdin. We, my dad, me and occasionally my grandfather, used to work on a homemade trail that would connect to a nearby state-run trail. Over several years, we made it around 5 miles into the woods when there was a medium-sized creek running along where we planned to continue. It was about 15 feet wide and about 2-3 to three feet deep in the deepest spot. This threw a wrench in the works, so we left it for another day when we could bring some wood and make a bridge. Coming back several days later, we smelled something god-awful. My grandfather made a remark of how it smelled a bit like rotting meat. Being a hunter, he knew it pretty well and had no idea how right he was. Upon reaching the creek, the smell was worse than ever. Looking up and across, the three of us froze. My dad whispered. On the other side of the creek, was a deer, hanging from a tree limb by its hind legs, tied there by a rope. Its guts were hanging partially out. And it looked like the bugs and crows had gotten to it. The next thing I noticed was the head, or rather lack thereof. We stood there for a few minutes, soaking it in before I threw up, dry heaving after a little bit. We hiked back to the house, and called the game wardens. They came by and my dad went with them. I stayed home this time. A few hours later, they came back and told us, we'll look into the area and see if we can find anyone. As well as a warning to be careful. As far as I know, nothing ever came of this although we never tried to expand the trail past it. 
First story, Kodiak, Alaska. Lived there for about six years from 1994-2001-ish. Walking home with a friend of mine at night in town, but of course town is a town. Not a city, surrounded by wilderness. Less likely to see wildlife, but totally possible. A car full of local kids pulls up hanging out the window screaming bear. It's gonna eat you, you'd better run. We had never heard of a bear waltzing through my part of town, but we decided to hightail it home anyway. Next day reports around town of a large Kodiak grizzly spotted in several spots around people's homes. Glad we didn't muck around. Second story, not a wilderness story, but shit man scared me anyhow. Lived in Auckland, New Zealand for like four months. I say lived and not visited because I didn't intend on coming back, but had issues with my work visa so had to return. Funnel web spiders were a thing there, looking back I'm glad I didn't realize what the funnel webs in the bushes were until I was back in the US. Hiked to Cathedral Cove and the bushes were saturated with spider funnels. Anyways, one day I'm sitting in the backyard having coffee and I see a spider the size of a baseball mid dragging something. An egg sack the size of a baseball. That spider was calmly relocating her brood midday around people, knowing nothing would f with her. That's how badass she was. I wasn't about to argue. Third story, woods of Indiana, morel mushroom hunting by myself. I'm a woman, at the time in my 20s but I had a conceal slash carry permit and a very lovely Glock 30 SF with a mag of hollow points and a lovely pink pistol grip holstered so I knew I had options should anything happen. I'm walking, mushroom bag in hand for some time when some branches break off behind me. I stop immediately to determine if it's big, an animal, etc. Small rustling is different than deer, and human steps are different than animals, you can hear the difference almost immediately. Also, if you stop, and they stop too, it could be a sign of trouble either human or animal that's stalking behavior. That's just what happened, so I took a few more steps, reaching behind me and unclasped the thumb brake, strap that keeps your gun in your holster, tucked my shirt in, then turned around and waited. From in the woods I hear it moving, and then it appears. A man, no mushroom bag of his own, comes up on my left, we lock eyes. He nods his head as if to say good day ma'am and disappears into the woods ahead of me. I decided that was all the mushroom hunting for that day. Came out with two big yellows though. Fourth, Kodiak again, out of town, black retriever freaked out over some unseen thing in the trees. Needless to say we left. For a short time I lived in a small rural town in New Mexico. Living in this small town my dad found a lot of odd handyman jobs and one of the main jobs was cutting and gathering firewood for a local general store. Having to drive deep into heavily wooded area to cut and collect firewood was not an easy a task for most trucks. My dad drove a large lifted 1980s Dodge Ram truck. The front of the grill also had a heavy metal rack to be able to winch ourselves out of sticking situations and to ram through anything else, no pun intended, this thing was a beast. The kind that had a big red switch to select what gas tank you wanted to drink from to drive this thing. One late evening right before sundown we were driving home in between two very small towns. The road in between them was very heavily wooded on either side. When out of the left side of the truck something big, Gray and Harry darted as fast as I've ever seen anything move across the road. We just missed the middle of whatever this monster was and must have clipped it and clipped it hard. My dad almost lost control and rolled the truck. Coming to a stop on the side of the road in the dirt. We both jumped out and tried to see what exactly we hit, but nothing was there. The only thing we found was blood in the bent rack of his truck. The scary thing is that this thing seemed to be almost like a wolf-shaped creature. And the even worse thing is that we were able to see the top of whatever this thing was over the hood of a truck with a roughly 2-3 to three inch lift. After a couple of mins both my dad and I got a very eerie feeling in the area so we ran back into the truck. My dad drawing his gun from under the seat just in case. We both drove back the long dark road home in silence. When we got home we didn't even empty the truck we just ran in and locked the door. Both of us having a strange feeling about what just went down. Still to this day that road gives me the creeps. I moved far away from those small town and back to a more familiar location. I was camping with my boy scout troop in Alpine, New Jersey when I was in early 8th grade, November of 2010, Rook. I stepped out of the cabin in the middle of the night to take a piss and went out and did my business. I stood outside for a second, taking in the campsite. I was standing by a picnic table and glanced around. The moon was so bright that it made the sky look dark blue rather than black, and there was a light fog ominously cascading along the campsite. I heard a rustling in some bushes and didn't think much of it at first. But it continued and got louder. Slowly, I moved my flashlight along until I got to the source of the noise as it got louder and louder. I looked over and saw something that I still don't quite understand, to be honest. This thing was gigantic. 
Standing on hind legs, he was tall and had a muscular body with fur that looked to be black slash dark gray. He had the head of a dog slash wolf, only thicker. And the weirdest part? Yellow eyes. I stared at him, and he stared at me. And then he just vanished. Ran away faster than I could even blink. I was so bewildered that I blacked out for a minute and had to sit down, but I went back to the cabin and tried to go back to sleep. I managed to block it out of my mind for a while repressed memories is the term, I believe, but it eventually resurfaced when I watched an episode of Monster Quest about werewolves. This doesn't really bother me anymore, truthfully. I actually think it was pretty damn cool, almost like the setting for a perfect horror movie lol. The funny thing is, I feel like this thing didn't want to see me any more than I wanted to see him. It's as if we looked at each other and just silently agreed to say nothing, leave each other alone and, and act like all this shit never happened. I personally don't buy into all that transformation, bark at the moon BS. I think werewolves are more of an undiscovered species. I stayed with the troop for a while after making Eagle to help mentor some younger scouts and while I'll always be known as the fun leader, probably due to being closer in age, I still always stress to them that the buddy system is mandatory at all times. Because my night could have been much different if this wolf creature I saw was a little more on the confrontational side. Cue the creepy organ music, lightning crackling, evil laugh and wolves howling. First time taking mushrooms, was sitting in camp chairs around a fire with some other friends. We see this guy maybe 20 yards or so away, bent over looking closely at things and bumping around the tents. He had several flashing slash glowing necklaces and bracelets, was definitely looking the part of having ingested certain drugs, but was maybe in his late 40s slash early 50s. He makes his way over to our circle when we ask what he's doing poking around the tents, maybe he was lost, certainly wasn't right-minded at the time. He sits on the ground right next to me in my chair, and starts going on about how fucked up he is and we just don't understand. Everyone is silently watching and listening to him ramble on. He turns to look directly at me, maintains eye contact when he says that we don't understand, and he removes his eye. His eyeball. He takes it out. That was it for me, I got up and sped walked back to my tent, zipped it up, noped right out of there and wondering what just happened that was sure to give me nightmares for weeks to come. A few minutes later, one of my friends opens the tent and comes in, and tells me that after everyone about shit their pants, they found out he had an artificial eye, I'm assuming after someone probably tried to help him after what they thought was an emergency of a guy ripping out his own eyeball. Anyway, not a big thing, but to witness something like that after taking hallucinogens for the first time was incredibly intense. Kidnapped by Dutch ghosts a la Rip Van Winkle? My dog and I leave the house to take a little stroll in rural New Hampshire. There's a main road that's paved at the top of the hill. There's a dirt road that comes down from the main road, hits a lake, and then goes back up to the main paved road. Now, it's a dirt road, but it's a developed dirt road and maybe 20 or so houses are along the road or on the lake. So basically it's a closed circle. The house is inside the circle. We hike straight down the hill through the woods to the lake. It's a young wood so, although it's a forest, it's not a dense, old growth type of forest. There's visibility. It's not that far to the lake but we seem to be hiking for a much longer time. I mean, it's maybe a half mile and that's stretching the distance. The woods are getting deeper and suddenly, we're in a ravine. I realize I have no idea where I am inside this circle of paved and dirt road. My dog is no help. He's amiable enough for a Malamute and happy to be ambling along in the woods, but he's no rocket scientist. I start heading up head up to the top of a small ridge to see what I can see and soon we come to a huge clearing and see a farmhouse and barn. Ha! Huh. There is no clearing, or farmhouse or barn inside the circle. Where the hell are we? It takes a minute, but I realize that we are outside the circle, at a farm that's at the top of the hill and on the paved road. So, while heading mainly down and to the right, and inside a circle we have ended up to the left and uphill and outside the circle. Maybe you just think I really suck at navigating and walking in a straight line on my own turf. Well, I couldn't cross the farm because my dog is not exactly the most friendly animal and I had no idea how amiable the farm dogs might be. So, we headed back into the forest and I was able to successfully navigate my way back home. Weird. Obviously I somehow didn't notice crossing a ditch, and dirt road, and another ditch and just walked too far. But I'll always wonder if those old guys playing nine pins didn't play a little prank on me. Not quite wilderness, but out in the middle of nowhere next to the foot of the Smoky Mountains and surrounded by forests and cow pastures. The closest civilized town is 17 miles away, East Tennessee southwest of the Tri-Cities. To explain this story properly, my family lives on a 30-acre piece of land. About one-third of it is mowed and kept clean with a few trees, 
the rest of it is left to grow like a forest. Pretty much anything can live there in the woods and you won't notice it unless you're looking for it. When I was back in college around 2011, my parents maintained an active and pretty good garden. Often my mom would dump food that could decompose into a giant heap for compost. While my dad would often go take it out for her, she would often get me to do it for her when I was at home. One particular day she left a bowl of vegetable scraps, loose lettuce, carrot shavings and potato skins, in a large plastic square bowl on a lawn chair on the back porch for me to take to the garden. Unfortunately she forgot that I had gone out with my dad to go take care of an errand an hour earlier. When we came home she realized her mistake and told me to go take the compost out to the garden, that it was on the porch. I went to go take the bolt but couldn't find it anywhere. I looked on the steps and around the porch thinking that she may have misplaced it, but when I ask her where the bolt is, she's completely puzzled. She insists that it was on the lawn chair and nowhere else. I'm baffled now and can't understand where this went. Nobody was at home to move it, and it was an almost clear, hot day with no wind. The bowl is also very heavy to carry, it would probably weigh 3 to 5 pounds with the amount of biomass slash garbage they put in it sometimes, with dimensions of 12 inches by 12 inches by 6 inches. Lastly this particular lawn chair was literally 2 to 3 feet from our sliding back door in the kitchen. Whatever happened to the bowl must have happened when my mom was in the kitchen, probably for a brief moment when she turned her back or something. Dad and my younger brother get called to look around, but they don't see it anywhere. It's not anywhere in the nearby yard, about 100 radius of the house. Concerned he told mom to not leave any garbage out ever again. It was shortly after that that we stopped composting too. Nevertheless, the implications were troubling. Someone or something had come up on the porch and stolen the compost garbage. Cleanly, without a mess and not a sloppy trail like an animal. You could have sworn it was a thief that took the bowl. About four years later after that incident, I had graduated school and was out of work. When I got home, my dad and brother were in the kitchen discussing how they were walking the property line while I was out. They told me that they found the bowl that had gone missing all those years ago. I think the lid was missing but the bowl was intact, minus the food garbage, mind you, and found at the edge of the property well near an abandoned water well, I'm estimating maybe 50 to 80 from the well from what they described. In distance to the house, this would be approximately 500 from the back porch. They already disposed of the bowl so I didn't get to look at it or anything. They claim slash theorize a bear might have taken the bowl, but I still have doubts. This also happened about three years ago as well, so it was wrapped and shut by the family. Up to this day I still had no idea what happened. It was eerie that something went off with 3 to 5 pounds of rotten vegetables within 2 feet of our house, and that it was not physically possible for a typical varmint to commit that act. It's always in the back of my head what unknown danger may be lurking out here. Okay, I'll start out by saying I'm experienced in the outdoors, I'm a hunter, hiker, and camper. I don't usually spook too easily because I basically grew up with a gun in one hand, a fishing pole in the other, and maybe a magnesium fire starter hidden somewhere special, as well as a knife, I always have a knife. Now I have three stories for you about being hunted, two of which I consider explainable. Second story. Okay so this happened maybe two years ago, I decided to take my fiancé hiking after work one evening in a park with some nice bluffs to climb for a great view, was hoping to see a pretty sunset, now this isn't a particularly safe thing to do in this time of night so I gave her my tactical knife and I carried my 40 calories pistol. So we arrive and park the car, and we start heading up a trail, about 100 meters and we spook and jump what I think was a deer, it hauled ass away from us so quickly that I only saw a flash of tan and maybe its flag, and honestly it scared us pretty good too, so now I'm on edge and we round a crest in a hill and I see a black mass to my left in peripheral vision, I unsnap the retention on my holster and turn to engage. I'm out of black dirt, now I calm down and we continue on and it's a nice evening, birds chirping still, bugs making noise, regular forest stuff. Now for the creepy, we get within about 200 meters of the halfway point on the trail and it starts to feel eerie like we are being watched, this time is clicked right away, the woods are now dead, but I start noticing movement keeping pace with us, so I keep us moving towards the top of the hill, the high ground which is the halfway point on the trail, we reach it and stop, and it stops, but the woods are still dead calm, and my fiancé tells me she thinks we are being followed, so we decide to move on and take a short cut back down the bluff to the paved trail, we make it in the woods get back to normal sounds again. We considered hiking more, but were a bit too spooked and left the park. Now whatever was following us I suspect was another cougar, it was quiet and we didn't see it, and the strangest part is that the stalking noises it did make sounded elevated like it was moving from tree to tree, and big cats have been known to do this. Story 3, the least explainable of the two. 
This one happened around June or July of 2007 I believe, I was around 17 years old and more cocky then, but still somewhat knowledgeable of the outdoors. My family used to own a cabin in NW Wisconsin, I basically grew up there in the summer, I knew the woods well, but at night it was wise to stay in the cabin or at least by the bonfire by the beach, because of bears, wolves, and cougars. One of the creepiest things was if you were having a bonfire, the tree line was visible from the fire pit and beach, and at night you always felt like you were being watched from that tree line. But during the day the woods always seemed normal, not so creepy, that is until this incident. So this happened somewhere between 1200 to 1400. Me and my cousin were having an airsoft battle, I was in full woodland camo, he was not, I retreated onto the ATV trail into the woods for a tactical advantage and our battle took us about 200 meters into about a third of the way up the trail. We had enough at this point and were standing at the edge of a clearing on the trail talking and he was maybe 10 feet from me, when I decided to mess with him, I shushed him and said we're being watched, he froze, then I realized the woods were dead quiet, and I got spooked and started scanning the tree line and the other edge of the clearing from left to right when I saw it. Its teeth gave it away, it was panting and staring at my cousin, I don't expect you to believe me, but what I saw was a wolf as big as a black bear, at least 300 pounds, but it wasn't normal, this wolf was on two legs crouching next to tree with its arm grasping the tree, grasping with a clawed hand, it had reddish brown fur. I told my cousin that we have to go and next thing I know he is sprinting and I look back at Wolfie who had locked on and sprinted a few steps on two feet and then I turned and ran when it looked like Wolfie was dropping to all fours, it charged us and sounded right on our asses barreling through the brush, but for whatever reason let us go when we broke out of the tree line and headed for the cabin. What stuck with me the most was the sheer size, Wolfie appeared to be nearly seven tall when upright, and that where it should have had front paws it appeared to have large clawed hands. Now I'm not sure how to explain it away rationally. I have heard wolves will occasionally kind of walk upright but as far as I know they can't sprint on two legs, nor do wolves get that big and black bears more waddle on two legs. The closest description is silly, a werewolf or dogman.